Welcome everyone to our next edition of our monthly client call. Um, I've got a special guest I want to share with you. This is our new office pup, a uh, new member of the Podetize family named Lucy, and uh, she's a resident here in the office now. So very nice to see you. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, that's just for fun. But anyway, so this is uh, February client call. We do this on the last Friday of every month. And this Friday is a little, I, I was surprised when everybody said, <laughs> thanks, Corey. Like we got an I love Lucy comment. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we do this the last Friday of every month. And this month it surprised me. I was like, what do you mean the client calls this Friday? But I then I looked at the calendar and next Friday is March 1st. And that'll happen to me again in March because the uh, the days are uh, similar. Obviously, March has more days than February, but the days of the week are similar. So we probably, well, actually, it might actually be close to the end of the month. I may be wrong on that. Anyway, um, but uh, today I want to share with you all um, some podcast wins. And and I think, especially because actually a lot of, of you on who are live anyway on this call are newer uh, podcasters. I mean, I know a lot of you have experience doing other things, maybe radio shows in the past or things like that. But, um, you know, I, I think it can be helpful to have an idea of what some podcasting wins are, because from our experience, podcasting wins are different for everybody. You know, podcasting is a wonderful thing and it's tremendously valuable, I find, across the board. But everybody has a different way of measuring success and, you know, evaluating what a win is for them. So I've got, you know, five or six examples I want to share with you. Some are recent, some are, um, actually some are very recent, and then some are, um, I would call, uh, you know, have been wins for, for a year or more, and, uh, but continue to be. So uh, one I wanted to mention right off the top is one of our relatively newer podcasters. When did um, Sean Enton and Taylor's show, Alexandra, uh, launch? Do you remember? Um, we have a, a client, actually clients who are co-hosts on a new show called Adventures in Health. And uh, Sean Enton and Taylor Smith are the hosts. And Sean has quite a personal story of very, very near death experience. He should not be alive today. And he, he's come back uh, from the edge. Their show launched January 1. Okay, launched first of the year. And just this week, um, we found they were being featured on iTunes in the new and noteworthy section in their category, their main category, which is um, alternative health. And because uh, that's what they, they talk about, stories of other people that have had near-death experience and near-death experiences, but not just near-death experiences, people who have come back from that to triumph in some way, to have success. Uh, it's a really good show. If you haven't listened to it, you might want to check it out. Um, but this is a big win for them because their show is getting a lot more exposure from iTunes, which is great. Um, and it's also a big win for all of us. And I, I want to explain why. For the last almost two years, the new and noteworthy sections of iTunes, and you see this most often when you use um, when you go from your your desktop or your laptop iTunes app on a computer, not just your phone, and you're searching through the different categories. Once you choose a category, it refreshes the page, and right at the top is this new and noteworthy section. Well, for about two years, new and noteworthy in every category on iTunes had not changed at all. And in fact, it was to the point where there are some companies out there who are marketing companies that are trying to sell paid marketing programs. And they guarantee, I don't know how they do it, as I don't think they should, but they guarantee that if you pay them a certain amount of money, you'll, money, you'll get up in new and noteworthy and they do this big marketing campaign to build awareness and get people to watch your show. Well, I've known for more than a year now that those promises were really misleading and, in fact, probably straight out fraudulent for those companies that do it because nothing was changing new and noteworthy. And the reason was because iTunes at Apple is a bit of a stepchild of a business unit. 
because it was created out of necessity. I mean, in, it, it's kind of ironic because Apple gave birth to the iPod, right? And the entire podcast community. But Apple doesn't make any money on it in reality. I mean, other than some advertising, but it's very, very little. Mostly it's there supporting the community. Used to sell, it used to support selling of iPods. And they don't really do that anymore. It's only the iPhone now. And uh, certainly they sell a lot of those. But it's, you know, there were a, a lot of employees that were required at iTunes and very little direct return on that expense or overhead expense for Apple. So we had heard news last fall, I think October, November, that, I, that Apple had let go of every employee except for five uh, every employee that was dedicated to iTunes. So they only had five employees in that its entire massive company, one of the biggest and most profitable companies on earth, only five people dedicated to iTunes. Now, and, and that sounded about right once we heard that, because even when we launch a new show at that time, it was taking about seven days for a new show launched on uh, iTunes to get approved. And it also made sense to us why New and Noteworthy hadn't changed in so long. I mean, we have a couple of clients who have had been in that New and Noteworthy section in their category for almost two years, and they had no idea why. And they were publishing one show a week, didn't have a dramatic amount of downloads. I mean, a good amount, a good, good shows, no question, but not huge downloads. So why would they be in, they were in New and Noteworthy? They were neither new nor I, I would say particularly noteworthy in terms of, you know, being dramatically, you know, achieving more downloads than other shows or having a bigger audience than other shows. And I think it's just because new and noteworthy at the time was not driven by an algorithm. It was actually staff picks of new shows they thought were worthy of recognition and would put them in there. And that's very different from how it used to be. Even five years ago, it was algorithmically driven for the most pardon me, for the most part. Um, but that had changed. And, and so it was clearly staff picks. And when there was no more dedicated staff responsible for it, as you can imagine, these people have too much to do. They weren't going to pay attention to new and noteworthy. But in the last couple of weeks, we've seen direct evidence. We're seeing new and noteworthy in every category on iTunes changing daily. So I, that definitely indicates it's either being driven by a new algorithm shift that is automated and somehow is determining new shows that are achieving a certain level of audience and they're giving them a little exposure, or um, they've actually got staff who are responsible now to do it again. Either way, doesn't matter to me. It's all great. Uh, because this this is great for every show. It's an opportunity for more exposure, and it certainly freshens up iTunes a bit. So that's a that's a big win. So congratulations to Adventures in Health, Sean Enton, Taylor Smith, and uh, oh, we have more people coming on. Welcome, Tim. Um, I'm still in the monologue phase, and then uh, I'm going to open up to questions in a little bit. We're talking about podcast wins today. Um, so new, noteworthy. Um, that's a big win. Um, uh, a big win that's pretty close to us here in the office is that um, Tracy launched a new podcast. The first one I have not done with her. We've been co-hosts on many of our podcasts together, but she launched one called the new trust economy um, in January, I believe um, in, in mid ish January. And this is a podcast that talks about things, uh, all things blockchain and a little bit cryptocurrency, but more blockchain uh, tokenization, things like that. If you're interested in that subject at all, uh, I would recommend you give it a listen. Well, that podcast, um, you know, is a really good example that you don't need massive downloads to achieve a win. Uh, they've had reasonable downloads. I want to say a couple thousand in the first few weeks, not, you know, not uh, setting the world on fire in terms of downloads, but I would say it's not necessarily about how many downloads you have. You, if, as long as you have, you know, you can have a small audience, but if you have a very focused audience of raving fans, that's better than having a huge audience of people that, you know, maybe are, 
uh, casually listening. So um, the New Trust Economy debuted in January. They've had several, um, uh, you know, really good big guests on there. And because of that, because of Tracy's exposure on there and somebody she interviewed on the New Trust Economy this week, I think it was Wednesday, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday, Tracy uh, was asked to be on a panel of people discussing blockchain on Larry King's show. So she was interviewed by Larry King on his program, which is an internet based, um, you know, interview style program, very much like Larry King live used to be on CNN. And it's on rt.com. Now this won't published till March 1st. So next Friday is when it's released. And certainly we'll push that out and make sure if anybody wants to watch that, they can. Um, but it's on um, rt.com and also on a lot of the streaming services, the, um, you know, like Roku and some of those things uh, that stream video to TV through those internet uh, devices or portals. So that's another a, a big example of a big win. You know, this podcast is not incredibly established yet, but just because of the networking of Tracy being a co-host on that show, and she has an interesting format. She has a co-host. Her name's Monica Prophet. She's in New York. Tracy's here in California. They do some episodes together, just discussing subjects as co-hosts, and then they each interview people separately. So Monica will interview guests alone sometimes and Tracy will interview guests alone sometimes and then they come together and do shows together and then they they talk about each of the interviews they had independently it's an interesting format so because of uh, interview Tracy had she got this opportunity was invited to be on a panel with Larry King and that just happened this week so that's a big win uh, the other big win that Tracy's gotten through podcasting of course was her ink column she got um, sought out uh, from the very first podcast we did. She got a speaking opportunity on stage. Editor at Inc. Magazine happened to be in the audience, saw her speak there, asked her if she wanted to write a column for Inc.com. And she's been doing that ever since. It's been about four years now. And that Inc. column has continued to lead to more wins for her. The most recent uh, one is that uh, this fall, this past October, she was invited and actually paid to go speak uh, on a stage to, of Amazon sellers in Hong Kong. So they paid to fly her over there, put her up, and she got to speak in front of all these Amazon sellers who were at this conference over there. So another example of a different kind of win that podcasting led to. Um, next, I want to highlight uh, Kevin Pekka, actually Dr. Kevin Pekka, who has a podcast called Expect Miracles. He is a chiropractor in a very specialized field of chiropractic called the Blair Upper Cervical Technique. And uh, if you're interested to know more about that, I recommend just tune in to Expect Miracles, listen to that a little bit and check it out. Um, I personally, through a different doctor out here in Southern California, am a Blair chiropractic patient. I think it's fabulous stuff. Um, but Kevin's win is that Every month he gets several and up to, you know, a half a dozen new patients from his podcast. And, and because a lot of people are skeptical of chiropractic and don't usually know much about the Blair upper cervical technique and, and what that really means for your entire body health, um, you know, he, he, new patients often come to him with a certain amount of skepticism and doubt. And, he uses the podcast to his advantage this way. He says to these prospective patients, I respect your, you know, you're being cautious and you're, you're not so sure. Why don't you just go listen to a couple episodes of the podcast or if he has one in mind because of what ails them, he'll say, hey, go listen to this episode and this episode of the podcast. And once they do, they almost always sign up with him. So that's how he's using his podcast as, as a big win for him. And it's continued. It's been more than a year he's been doing that. In, in his first 90 days, he got a dozen new patients in the first 90 days of launching his show. But the win for him is the longevity. It's continued. He continues to interview great people, put out great episodes, and it continues to help lead generate for his practice. 
Um, so the next one, um, I'm going to have the next two really are the last two uh, that I want to talk about today. And there is quite a contrast between the two of them. Uh, one of them is Bob Rourke, who has a podcast called Business Leaders Podcast. And Bob, he's a successful financial manager. Um, he, he manages um, money of usually high net worth individuals that have sold a business and they're then, you know, wanting to grow that money. And he has to be, you know, actually we've run into a lot of people in financial industries like that and they stay far, far away from podcasting because if they talk about their profession, FINRA, which is his, you know, government organization, federal organization. Oh, we have another person. Welcome, Shelly. Uh, this is recorded so you can catch up later on what you missed. Um, I'm still in the monologue phase and then I'm going to open it up to questions in a few minutes. Um, but anyway, so Bob Rourke, Business Leaders Podcast, he does not care how many people listen to his podcast. I mean, it's syndicated everywhere. It's on iTunes and Spotify and iHeart and everywhere that we put podcasters. But his entire goal is to lead generate for his business for what he does professionally managing money of high net worth individuals. But in order to stay away from FINRA regulations and having to have everything approved, he just doesn't talk about managing people's money. His entire podcast is about focused on that guest. There are always some sort of successful business leader, somebody, you know, big in business. And he, um, reaches out to them and, and tells their story, asks them questions about their story. You know, everything from biographical, where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? How'd you get started? And then their philosophy on life and how they made it successful in business. So nothing about investing or managing their money. So he doesn't have to worry about FINRA, but his entire podcast is a VIP guest strategy. He on, and this is different from just about every other podcaster we produce the show for is that most of them upload the raw audio to us. We produce it. We get the audio ready. We convert it to a blog post, do all the graphics, all the things, SEO work we do, and we put it out and schedule it to publish on a certain day. He doesn't work quite that way. He has us do all that work and let him know, hey, it's done in draft. Then he lets that guest review it, make sure that they're happy with it. And if there's any changes they want, he gives us feedback and we make the changes. And then he indicates, okay, you can publish it. So he publishes on random days. But again, it's all about the VIP guest strategy and it works for him. It works so much that he's been doing it for several years and he's committed for more. And he actually has, um, we have a very special package we've done for, for people that are committed to doing this long term and they want a bigger discount. And I, this is not sales in any way, but my point is this works so well for him. He bought an unlimited package for two years, which is not even something we advertise. It's something we, you know, have just offered to those individuals that it would make sense for. And if you're doing anywhere between three and five episodes a week, it probably makes sense for you to do that. But anyway, his win is about lead generation for his business. Cause when he lands that type of client that are the profile of his guest, it's about $200,000 of revenue to his business for a year usually. Uh, and so obviously the money he's spending on, the time he's spending on doing the episodes and the money he's spending on producing it is, is well worth it. So that's a different kind of win. And I thought it's good to highlight something different. Now I wanna contrast that with another um, longtime podcaster with us, Scott Carson. Uh, his recent win is he just tipped over 250,000 downloads on his podcast. I think in January, no. February. So it's even more recent. So just in February, he tipped over 250,000 downloads of his podcast. Now, Scott is definitely all about major exposure, being everywhere. And you know, making that content available in multiple different mediums. He records it as a video. It gets put out on, on YouTube. I think in his case, it's Vimeo, uh, but it gets put out there that way. It gets converted to the podcast, converted to the blog posts, all the graphics. He records his live over Facebook as well and then posts it to the video. And, and you know, then we take the audio track and do the uh, podcast and all that. But his business is definitely 
being driven by marketing. And this is a major, his major marketing method is his podcasting. And yes, Binge Network is another one. Thank you, Art. I know that's a new one that Scott has started. Um, that's also available, I think, on the Roku's downloads and things like that. So he's definitely putting out his content multiple different mediums to try to be everywhere and capture as many people as possible. And Scott, has just from podcast listeners gotten several hundred thousand dollars of investment into what Scott's podcast is about distressed real estate note investing. Uh, and so, you know, he um, invests other people's money into distressed real estate notes and, and they get a, a quite a good return. It's actually a great niche of real estate investing. And he's had many hundreds of thousands of dollars people who've called him up to invest that money with him just from listening to him on the podcast. So that's a little different win. Um, but even just on the volume, 250,000 downloads, and that's in about 18 or 19 months since he started his show. So um, not everybody is interested in downloads. Like I said, Bob Burke, he doesn't care. He doesn't care if one or two or three people listen to his show. It's all about the guest VIP strategy, building that rapport and then, you know, lead generating for business through them. Um, and it's kind of an ego strategy, you know, highlight the client, talk about what's great about them and you build that relationship. Right. So, um, and then Scott definitely all about the volume and the downloads being everywhere, exposing his business and getting uh, more lead generating because of that. So that's it for the examples of podcast wins. I wanted to talk about today. A couple of things I do want to mention. Um, I don't know if any of you are uh, in Florida. I know Tim Bush, you are. Um, but coming up um, March 7th, 8th, and 9th in Orlando, uh, Alexandra and I are going to be there. And um, we are exhibiting, showing at PodFest. I'm also speaking at PodFest. I'm actually speaking on stage with Scott Carson for part of it. And then I have a little um, stage appearance just myself. And... Um, so PodFest is a wonderful conference. In 2018, I attended a whole lot of different podcast conferences to try them all out and experience them. Uh, and I have to say of all of them, PodFest really, I thought was the most fun and the most valuable as a podcaster. And then also as a podcast business owner, uh, it's a very cooperative, um, environment and a lot of great networking uh, between different podcasters and also sharing best practices, opportunities. So if any of you want to go and you do not have a ticket yet, um, we actually um, can help you get a ticket with a discount code, take a little something off. Um, I don't have that on the audio right now, but I will. Um, we're going to follow up this session with an email with the replay and I will get you that. Also, if any of you have, um, Scott Carson did an episode of his show uh, earlier this month, uh, interviewing Chris Kermitos, who is one of the co-founders of PodFest. And I know that he published that, uh, was it January? No, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, anyway, I, I, pretty recently, uh, he did that interview with Chris Kermitos, and I know he also had the link and discount code there too. So we're gonna uh, send out an email to everybody so uh, if you're interested, you can uh, get that. But PodFest, it's a great time. And um, not only it's a great time, uh, it's a lot of fun, but I always learn something new. I think everybody gets a lot out of it. And uh, compared to some of the other podcasting events, with their, which are either a little more corporate or a little more self-serving, trying to sell you something, PodFest in and of themselves are not trying to sell you anything. So um, this event that you pay to go to, I think their ticket price is $300 if you pay full price or just under or something like that. So they're not trying to upsell you on anything while you're there. It's really, like I said, more cooperative, shared learning, shared experience, um, and a great time. And then there are vendors like us. We're going to be there to introduce ourselves to people that don't know us. And we're doing a big push. We're, we're a gold sponsor. In fact, every badge at the show is going to say potatize red on the top of it and um, we're, we're doing a big push this year, just trying to build that brand awareness and obviously get more customers hosting on our platform. So, um, is this note for me for this show? 
That was the that was the only discount code I can remember. Oh, what's it called? Holiday gift one word. It still works. Oh, holiday it. gift. All right. It's so, oh, we have it. So, all right, Alexandra found one of the gifts there, and I, it should still be good. You did. It works. Okay. Alexander just tried it. So if you go to podfestexpo.com, podfestexpo.com, and you want to get a ticket, type in holiday gift, one word, and it'll take $75 off that ticket price. So, all right, we got one of them for you. So, okay. That is all of what I had planned to speak about on my own. So I would like to open the floor to anybody that has any questions or um, comments, anything you would like to talk about, just let me know in the chat that you'd like to come on and then um, we'll bring you up, you know, one at a time. Uh, certainly not required, but this is a great opportunity for you to ask questions of me. And usually Tracy would be with us. Tracy is at another event up in Los Angeles today called the City Summit and speaking from the stage today, although she was pretty sick and I understand lost her voice. I haven't even talked to her this morning. She only text messaged me. So I don't know if that talk happened or not, but anyway, that's why she couldn't be here today. Um, but podcast wins was her little idea and it was a lot of fun. And I know a few of you came in late. We are going to have the recording up and we'll send that email out. And um, there's a couple other really interesting wins in the beginning. You might be, uh, you might like to go back and check out. So please uh, feel free to do that. Um, so Tim said he's going to PodFest. That's cool. That's easy for Tim because he lives in Orlando. <laughs> Actually, Tim, I may be talking to you. I may need to ship one or two things into your um, warehouse for, <laughs> for me to pick up for that thing. But um, Tim has a great show, everybody, called On the Shelf. If uh, you're interested in, you know, ever selling any physical product at retail or learning about that, uh, he's got a great show you should go listen to. Um, so I know there's a few new people here today that haven't been with us uh, previous months. Um, anybody have any uh, questions? Uh, uh, uh. So Art is asking a question about server speed. Does anyone else have a problem with slow uploads of episodes? So what do you mean? I mean about your specific podcast uh, being served or are you talking about something else? Yeah, when I go to upload my episodes or or information into the uh, to the dashboard, for me it's really slow. I've got a really fast server, you know, or really fast internet connection, and a lot of bandwidth and all that. And it it just it's just slow. I mean, it just hmm. goes uploading to uh, to the dashboard. Well, are you uploading your raw audio to Dropbox through our portal meaning through the window yes. that, okay it, and that's the process that is slow mm, just a whole, like when i when i finish it you know after i've loaded it? all the information and submit it it's yeah. just slow okay well there's a lot of processes going on there at once it does depend how many people are on the system at the same time i will tell you that um, I, I, I've experienced some of that myself. And then Tim Bush has said he's had it happen, but not that often uh, in the chat you can see there mm -hmm. are not, not common. Um, it depends how many people are on the system at once, but I will tell you this, a major initiative for 2019, we are completely overhauling the entire backend system and more importantly, separating the front end sales side of our site from the back end podcast serving part of our site. And it's all about speed and uh, efficiency. So we're very well aware that the pages, uh, especially on the dashboard on the back end of the site load really slowly. Part of that is overhead because while it's heavily customized and hacked, it is currently using WordPress as a backbone and we need to get away from that uh, because every little page you load it has to load WordPress, mm -hmm. which is uh, overhead, okay. right? So that's part of why, and I apologize for that. I, we are on the fastest server where we are right now that we can be on, but there are many other things structurally and systematically that we know we can and are implementing, especially as we're pushing to get a lot more people on the platform um, hosting, although hosting won't matter because you're uploading episode requests. That's a different process. But anyway, I understand and I've heard that and I, I, 
always looking to try to make it faster. So I apologize for any latency you have there. I do appreciate your patience, but um, you will see it improve as okay. we go on here. Um, Good. So <laughs> we're also making some improvements to the front end of the site, like when people need to replenish their episode package. Right now, our shopping cart, you have to click like through three steps to be able to purchase something. And it, we're, there's no reason for that. And we're streamlining that now this month. So you just have one step. Um, so, I mean, certain things, we're always trying to improve it and uh, reduce the number of pages loaded for each individual, which should speed it up for everybody. Good. Thank so, you. Yep. Thank you for your question. Um, so, uh, did you have anything else, Art, right now? No, I'm, question I'm wise? fine. Okay. Okay. Tim has a couple of questions on equipment. Tim, do you want to uh, come on? Hey, Tim. So, what's your question about equipment? So, as you know... I'm as rudimentary as it gets. I think I, uh, I still record on my, on my portable, um, my portable recorder that we, you and I talked about the, um, zoom five, I think it's called. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I mean, it does, it does okay, but, um, I'm looking to get a, a, a new mic and, um, not one that plugs directly into my computer, one that plugs into, some, you know, I don't really know the, the equipment. It needs to plug into some sort of an amplifier and then into the, so I'm, I'm looking for suggestions. I don't want to spend a million dollars, but, uh, but my, my portable one's still good when I go to trade shows and whatnot, but I'd like something more permanent. What are you trying to achieve as you, what you are guys your not calling me back? You, you guys not calling me back saying my audio has got a problem. <laughs> um, what software are you using to record? Uh, well, right now I record on. Are you the, using the Zoom device? On the Zoom Five, and it records a nice. You know, I, I mean, I, I was able to get a cover for it so that we didn't have as much uh, popping. Um, it actually records in waves, so it, it, it's a pretty good recording. Wow. I've had no issues with it, but again, it's just sitting on my, you know, sitting on my desk, and so it's rickety. And um, but you have a microphone plugged into it. No, you're just I'm using it's the mic on it. Uh, it's got the bi-directional mic on it. Yeah. Okay. So it has though XLR ports, doesn't it? It does. You might find your quality would increase dramatically by getting a mic not unlike this, uh, which has the XLR port on it. Uh -huh. Also has USB if you wanted to go directly in your computer ever. Um, but um the little mics built into the zoom recorder, I don't think are going to give you quite as good a sound as another. Sure. And these mics are about 80 bucks uh, what is that? on Amazon. It's an, this is the commercial model. It's on, it's an ATR 2005. There's also an ATR 2100 is the more retail version, but I personally, I like the commercial one 2005. This is the one we send people when they start their show with us. And uh, we send them uh, a mic. This is the one I send. And I, so I wouldn't have to get a, a booster. I could just plug that mic into my Zoom 5? Correct. I believe your Zoom 5 has an XLR port on it. I mean, I, I provide these to our customers. We buy them a little cheaper, but by the time we ship them to you, it's yeah. the cost is probably about... Yeah, that's it. That will take the other end of this plug Yeah. from that mic right into there. And then... Um, I would just start there because that Zoom 5 is a great device if you're happy recording on that. Um, I was thinking if I sent you the mic, if it'd be any cheaper for you, but it's probably about the same by the time we ship it to you. Um, yeah. So you might as well go bring, prime. Either yeah. that or bring it to me. I'll pick it up from you. Oh, that's true. I could bring you one when we come out. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll no just problem. pay for it when you come out. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's what, probably what I would do. Now, what's coming, and I can give everybody a little peek into this, um, we've been developing our own microphone, uh, which has, have. yes, we have. Well, for reasons of, show everybody your Zoom device for a second. You just hold it up so everybody can see it. Does this, we do provide people with a Zoom H6 sometimes, an upgraded equipment package, if they are always gonna record people in person and the Zoom H6 has four of those XLR ports that go right, in. Right, right. And, and, and the great thing about that device is it records a separate audio track for each mic that goes into it. So if you do a lot of in-person recording, 
we do with our setup package, we have an upgraded recording recording equipment package people can buy, but it's really overkill for most people. They've only had, I think I've sold six or seven of them total. So not a ton, but it's very good, high quality recording equipment. Um, and very high quality recording equipment. And sorry, my younger daughter is calling me, letting me know she's on the way home from school. It's not supposed to happen. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the um, so it's great equipment, but it's a lot to deal with. And you think about like Tracy took a Zoom H6 to a conference and recorded a lot of people there live. Two microphones, two cables to that device. Got to make sure all the buttons are pushed, that you're recording right. everybody properly. And then, you know, making sure it's on, but you can't hold it. You got to put it down on the floor. And to her, she was frustrated. She's like, I'm not doing this ever again at another trade show because there's too much tech to deal with. And because of dealing with all of that, she had one interview with Gary Vaynerchuk that didn't get recorded. Because That's it was always today. my biggest fear, right? Uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. And she, that was where she had an interview with Steve Wozniak and Molly Bloom and some other people. It was great. And, and she got all of those. But that one with Gary V um, got lost. And it's because of that equipment was so complicated. So we're developing a microphone that not only has, I had to take mine off, um, but not only has a mic flag built into it. So you, if you're on video and we send these to all of our customers, you probably, everybody should have gotten one. Um, we sent art. Yeah. Revi when each, I think we sent it. Yeah. To art. We sent him his new artwork to slide into his anyway. It has a mic flag built into the mic, but more importantly, it records to an SD card right in the mic. So if you are out at a trade show and you want to just record an episode, you don't need to have any that other piece of equipment, no cables, it's battery operated, records right to the SD card. And <clears throat> we're also doing it so that um, if you plug it into your computer to use over Zoom, Zoom records, yes, but uh, you know, and, and Zencaster and certain other programs do that. But we've also seen they have glitches at times and either the audio is out of sync or, or actually some of the audio doesn't record well. So at minimum, it's a backup recording and it's also recording wave format. So it's a higher quality than the kind of file zoom natively records. But if you plug it into your computer, it's going to record your guest on one track that's coming from the computer into the mic. And then it's going to record you into the mic onto that SD card as a second track. And then um, the other thing that's coming, the second step to that is another mic. Like if you're at a trade show, Tim, and you want to give a mic to your guest and a mic to you, you'll plug the guest mic into this mic and it'll record their track here on that a second track on the SD card. Oh, nice. so, so we were trying to simplify the equipment. And, and especially for people recording in person or wanting a backup recording, people that travel a lot. And uh, it's going to be $199 uh, for that recording mic. And uh, it's, I will have the first one in my hands by the end of March. And then it's going to roll out. Uh, what we did is I went and found the same manufacturer over in Asia that makes these ATR Audio Technica mics that have been so good. And then I, they came to the U.S. last month and I met with them. So this has been a project going on in the background, um, but it's going to be fantastic. We're very excited okay. about that. So, but anyway, if you have that equipment, we'll bring you a better mic and start there. And then we'll try your audio and, and it's probably going to be a lot better than <laughs> using think. the little bi-directional mic that's built in. Indeed. Yeah. And your your environment, well, you're on the computer mic right now, but you're you're. The, I'm hearing a little echo in the room. Um, hopefully, the mic, or it sounds like you're in a box a little bit, but it may be the mic on the computer. Um, I'm in a little alcove in my office, so uh, it could have a little echo. But I am on my computer. I just yeah. I saw it was late, so I just put you know connected um yeah, yeah i don't normally have an echo when i record through the through the mic yeah okay um, there's also problem. a fan going so that might be a little buzz in the background i normally would turn that off well the microphone will also cut down on on some of that also and your zoom device is probably better you're right um so wouldn't worry too much about it but okay 
Well, thank you. And I'll see you in a week and a half. Sounds good. Out in Orlando. All right. Um, anybody else have a question or anything they would like to share with the group or discuss? Anybody else have a different kind of win? I have a question. Yes. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I can start video and just since, oh, look at my wow. nice <laughs> That's an accident. Very yeah. cool effect. Yeah, let's, just be, let's just be really, let's show what not to do when you're doing <laughs> a Zoom podetize. <laughs> So I'm going to be a guest on a podcast um, next week, next Friday. Okay. And um, I don't have any tech other than my computer, microphone, et cetera. So I just wanted to kind of have you listen to my voice through my computer mm. and see how you thought it was. Or I have a little lapel microphone. You know, I know I can just practice with some people, but um, I really – don't know that I want to have the full on look with the headphones, yeah. microphone. And I, I just wanted to sure. know how clear you think the sound is. It's not the best quality sound right now over the computer, quite honestly. And you know what I would recommend you do this, this session's being recorded and we're going to put it out and make it available to everybody. So you can go and fast forward ahead to this point in it and listen to it yourself. Okay. I would say try the lapel mic, see how that is. But if you are going to be doing headphones. this, your headphones might be okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably better than the open air mic. Um, if your room you're in has a lot of hard surfaces, if there's not carpeting on the floor and it's got windows where there's no drapes on it or anything, if you can go to a different room that has, thanks Art, bye. Um, if you can, um, if you can be in a room that has more soft surfaces, uh, it'll cut down on a lot of that. Um, I do you know, a carpet, but it's echo. a loft office. It's a loft. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, some of your, your equipment can help that, but okay. if you're going to do this a lot, you might want to get a decent microphone like this. It's like I said, on Amazon, I think about $80 prime. If you're a prime customer yeah. and no shipping and it plugs in with USB directly to your laptop. And the only other thing that I'm going to tell you, that's a cardinal rule. I know you don't like, you know, this big over ear headset and that's fine. I like the way it sounds better. And I, I do this a lot, so I use it, but you need to at least use earbuds to listen to your, whoever's interviewing you and plugged into your computer. It doesn't, you don't have to use that mic in the earbuds. You can use this kind of mic or, you know, or the lapel mic if that sound quality is better, if it plugs into your computer. But the, the quality issue is you are listening to me coming out over your computer's speaker just in the air. And your microphone will pick up my voice coming over your mic and make a bit of an echo. So what the earbuds do is separate what you're hearing from what the mic hears. Okay. So you want to do that. And, you know, you can use some that you don't even see. And, you know, Tracy never used to do it. She didn't like it, but she found the quality also to be so, so much better that she'll wear in earbuds with every interview she does. Um. And then a decent mic. If you're going to do it a lot, get a good mic. I mean, they're not too expensive. Okay. Great. All right. And I, maybe I'll get rid of the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> they probably want to see more of you. It's very interesting. It's almost like you're on a green screen, but. but well, it's face... supposed to be on a green screen. I was just playing around earlier. So. Okay. It would, if yeah. I was on a green screen, you wouldn't see it. Okay. But... Yeah. Something that's wild. Wild <laughs> video. Cool. Right. Thanks. Thank nice you to talk to question. You. Okay. It's getting to be what now? About 10 to 2 Pacific. So don't forget um, if anybody is interested or can get to PodFest, that's going to be a great time. Uh, oh, Corey is uh, saying he wants to thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Corey, for uh, being a new customer. Alexandra would speak to you, but she, I don't know if you heard or if you're on for the, she lost her voice. Um, you know, she, she's not speaking much today, but anyway, um, I'm very excited about your show that I think should, did we launch it yet? Yeah, it's launched. All right. So Corey's show. So the successful thinker, um, which I think is kind of a modern, uh, or at least as we conceived it, a modern, um, 
business lesson, kind of Napoleon Hill inspired type of thing. Uh, so any of you interested in that, you might want to check that out on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts because it's everywhere. We put it everywhere. Um, so check that out and we'll be excited to see what your wins are going forward, Corey. So um, I know a couple of you came in late, Shelly and Tim, at least, I think, um, maybe Catherine as well. You will we'll send you an email with the recording so you can check out the beginning. We did talk today about all different kinds of podcast wins and what they are to different people and, and how different podcasters measure success. And uh, so you probably missed a few of those in the beginning. Probably worth checking out. So I think that's going to be a wrap for the February edition of the Podetize Brandcasting uh, Client Coaching Call. And we will be back uh, last Friday of the month in March for the same. Oh, I'm going to Traffic and Conversion next week, which is a great digital marketing show. So I'll probably have some great things to share with you next month, next time about that. Uh, some new tech, tip, tech tips and tools, things like that. Uh, we're always looking out for you, making sure we stay on top of it all here. So uh, there's a reason you might want to come back to next month. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a great weekend.